Welcome to Altered, a lifestyle podcast about remembering the mystery, embodying the mythopoetic, and embracing the playful, devotional path for those who are ready to experience magical, everyday living. I'm your host, Hannah Lucas Goldberg, and this is a space for those heroines and heroes on the quest to reclaim the joy, beauty, and wonder that life has to offer in all its ups and downs and in-betweens. In other words, those who are ready to step into a deeper resonance of love. Shall we? Welcome to the Altered Podcast. Ah, it feels so good to say that. <laughs> this is something that has been nestling into the fertile soils of my heart for several months. And I have deeply desired to birth it. But it hasn't been the right time, and I felt that. And what better day than today, the 13th of August, during this Leo season and Venus Kazemi, which is really just a lot of like esoteric jargon to say it feels divinely aligned to begin the podcast today, whether it actually gets posted today or not. <laughs> Uh, my name is Hannah Lucas Goldberg, for those of you who are new to any of my work, and I am a mentor, mystic, and renaissance woman, currently residing in Ubud in Bali, Indonesia, and life is magical and abundant and beautiful, and I desire to share basically all these different rituals and practices that have come to me, come to me, come through me, however it is that they have arrived. They have arrived to me and they have supported me in altering my life. Right? And so the podcast itself is called Altered and it's a play on the word alter, that which is about change and that which is also like the altar, like where we pray. And I love word puns. I love puns. I love wordplay. <laughs> so first of all, yes. And then secondly, yeah, it's to support those who have ears to hear and those who are ready to see in a new way, what is possible for life by tapping into something deeper than what you've experienced before? Perhaps. Learning how to connect to the divine within. The word divine sounds like Devi, which is the goddess, and Div right? Divination, that which we are living in this like magical, all-knowing, all-knowing, like gnosis, the embodiment of knowing space. So the practices and the experiences and the transmissions that come through this podcast are here to support you in the embodiment of connecting deeply to source and self. And really what we realize as we start taking the steps towards self-discovery is that we realize that the, the deeper we go into knowing who we are, the deeper we actually connect to our, our source essence, our God essence, the new, N-O-U-S in Greek, which translates to higher mind, but really is about the higher heart because the soul, that God essence, that spark of life that, le like, that lives within us, lives in our hearts, right? So we, we have these practices 
and these teachings and these tools to be able to come into a deeper resonance of that and to live in a space where we are accessing our higher truths, our potential. And we will never actually achieve our potential because our potential is always growing and magnifying as we continue to uncover who we really are and what we're here to do. So it's an ever deepening lifelong journey and process, which is why this is a lifestyle podcast. Ultimately, when we choose a life of devotion and a life of self-discovery, it's a lifelong choice and lifestyle. It's not like, oh, I'm, I'm going along the path and I've experienced my spiritual awakening and now I'm healed and now I'm resonating at my highest truth and I don't need to do any more work. That's not how that works. <laughs> and that's okay, too, because it's not supposed to be about that either. And those who say that and put themselves on a pedestal and say, this is the way, uh, I invite you to question that. I invite you to question me. I invite you to question everything that comes to you throughout the duration of your devotional altered life, because ultimately that's what it's about. Question everything. Ask yourself, what is all this really about? When we do that, when we ask questions like that, we delve further into the mystery. We delve further into this new, this we. Like in French, the word new is also the translation for we and not we, we, non, like not like yes, but as in we, you and I. Right? When we tap into the new, we tap into the we. Right, the royal we, the royal me, royal we meaning me and God, God and me, we. Right, so yeah, we tap more deeply into the mystery, and that's where the juice of life transpires. That's where it, it thrives. That's where the magic of life begins when you can start resonating with the mythological, this mythopoetic, like taking the myths and realizing that each and every one of them is just an archetype for you to embody and resonate with, channel that energy through, and then realize that you can shape shift between them and access them at any given time. That's when you start living as the heroine and hero of your own epic tale. And when we live in that space of the mythopoetic, we start to really realize that we are in charge of our own lives, that we are accountable for our own lives. And there's something radically terrifying about that (laughs) because then it means that if you're in charge of your own life and your own destiny, then what are you doing with it? What are you choosing? How are you co-creating and weaving with the universe? And if you desire a different reality, why are you not choosing that instead? And how can you get there? When it comes to self-development, the way that I see it is that we have a version of ourselves that we see who we are at any given moment and the version of ourselves that we see that we really are being at any given moment. And sometimes there is a really big disconnect. And at the beginning of the self-development journey, there's usually quite a big disconnect, which leads to spiritual awakenings and grief and all of these things because our, our egos, our minds become shattered. And we then do our best through different tools, different uh, self-development rituals and this the whole journey of spiritual awakening which is really just an awakening we don't need to add the word spiritual to everything because everything is spiritual the way i see it (laughs) but for those who are newer on the journey yes spiritual awakenings but the whole purpose is to then come into integrity which is to close the gap between who you are and who you think you are being till there's virtually nothing separating the two 
And that's where we come into this concept of sacred marriage and Hiros Gamos. Hiros Gamos literally meaning sacred union. And sacred union is a lot of different things. In mythology, the Hiros Gamos is the union between a god and a goddess. But I also perceive the Hiros Gamos as the integrity and union of the soul. And it's really a reclamation of the soul. Reclamation meaning we are reclaiming bits of the soul from where we have scattered ourselves from self-abandonment over years. Maybe even through past lives, maybe even through an ancestry, ancestry. And we reclaim these parts that we've given either willingly, freely, or unwillingly, it doesn't really matter. And we reclaim them back into wholeness. We come back into integrity of the soul, of the new. And once that happens, we come into integrity and sacred union within ourselves. It becomes a balance then of all polarities, light and dark, masculine, feminine, ener masculine and feminine energy. And it doesn't really matter what the poles are, but that's where we come into this sacred union of self. And there's a few different ways that I perceive Hiros Gamos that I'll get into, I'm sure, like over time with the continuance of this podcast. But the most important piece of Hiros Gamos is to do it for yourself as an individual. If you can do it for yourself, then when it comes to sacred union outside of yourself, then we start to connect deeply to others who are also doing the same thing, right? That's where uh, sacred partnership comes in and sacred union with another, which to me, Hiros Gamos is the next octave of relating both to self and to the external and to source itself, because that's the third, that's, that's like third prong, essentially. We have different types of relating. There's karmic relationships, which are really here to teach us lessons. We have soulmates who are like cloth. We're woven from the same thread. There's a big trend in twin flames which i actually find deeply disturbing <laughs> it's like the unrealized heroes gamos the teenage version of heroes gamos and i feel like just talking about twin flames is an episode in and of itself but essentially twin flames is a deeply mm, disturbing <laughs> a deeply disturbing and adolescent view of relating where it should feel traumatizing and triggering but they're always meant for you it's not really about that it's um it's really the heroes gamos is the is what it is about when it comes to being in divine union with self being in union being aligned and in integrity with self and therefore source and then choosing in a mature I've never said mature that way. Mature? <laughs> a mature way of then choosing another being who is at the same resonance and frequency. Because if we're not standing and, or sitting or laying or relating in partnership with somebody who's at the same frequency of ourselves, really what we're doing is creating, it's just a creating a discrepancy in, in the metaphysical field in the auric body which is really just a fancy way, I suppose, of saying it's not going to work, generally speaking. But Hiros Gamos is an elevated next octave view of relating. And it starts with self. And then it can relate to others. And then once you come into union and harmony with another externally, then you actually work together to create another version of Hiros Gamos, which is creating like the byproduct of what it is that the two of you bring together. That could be a child, that can be a project. It doesn't really matter because creation is just creation. It just creation shows itself and presents itself in, uh, in myriad ways. So I'm here for the heroes gamos of the soul, beloveds. And if you're here, then 
I suppose that you are as well. And everything that we're going to speak to on this Altered Podcast is to support ourselves in reclaiming and remembering ourselves so that we can tap into our soul of souls, our heart of hearts, our light of lights, the lumen nature, which is that kernel of light that's nestled deep within the dark, which lives and resides in the heart, and that we're back into to find over and over and over again. Welcome. This is what it's about. I'm so glad that you're here. Leave comments below. You can reach out and schedule time to speak to me if you're interested in deeper one-to-one work about anything that I'm speaking to, because this is what I do with my clients when I work one-to-one with them. And this is the stuff that I am so excited and juicy and ecstatically about these days. Sending you lots of love and blessings. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, please rate, share this with a friend. I'd be super grateful. Let's get this thing going, yeah? Ciao.